Mike Curry, and I'd like to call this Board of uh, Selectmen's business meeting to order on this 28th day of August 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of, of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like to state for the record that the entire proceeding this evening, except any executive sessions, are being recorded for both TCTV Cable Station uh, 8 and the TCV, TCTV YouTube channel. Therefore, there is no need for additional recording, and I ask that if anyone else is recording, please announce that now. Thank you. As always, our agenda for this evening has been set no later than 48 hours out by law and is publicly available at the official source for town information, templetonma.gov. I would also remind all citizens of our four villages to sign up or register for emergency updates using the code red system. It is on the left-hand side of the screen near the bottom for our website. Although I have the discretion as chairperson to add and remove from the agenda, it has been set to allow for time, personnel resources, and public awareness. I reserve the right to remove the agenda items around to best fit our business and guests. Thank you. Uh, first up tonight, we have, um, well, just before we begin, we have two esteemed guests with us tonight is Representative Whips and Senator Golby um, from our legislative team, and they'll be uh, first on the agenda, but we're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, meeting minutes for the four, uh, 14th of August, 2019. Everyone have a copy. Holly, the only issue that I saw with the uh, the minutes mm -hmm. was the, the uh, vote. It was the first vote. Um, motion carries three to zero. Um, but we had um, Mr. Bennett had voted no. You had that in there, so wouldn't it be three to two to one? Right. No, there were four of you. Okay. Oh, Diane. Do we have? I'll double check that. Okay, though. and just the number didn't didn't match up for it, but that's the only thing I saw on it. Otherwise, it looked like good minutes to me. Okay. I'll entertain entertain a uh, motion to uh, admit the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of eight fourteen twenty nineteen as written. Or did you want to make that one with, for, with, with one, one correction? Possible amendment. Yeah. Possible amendment. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any additional discussion for the minutes for 814? Okay. Uh, to admit them, Jeff, how do you vote? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Abstain. And I vote yes. Great. Um, moving into new business. Um, Carter, any new employees? We have none this evening, Mr. Chairman. Great. Um, let's move into main event. Senator Gobi, Representative Whips, we're so happy to have you with us this evening. Um, you're bringing great news to the town, and I, I appreciate that. And uh, Chief Mike Bennett's with us tonight, um, but I believe we have a presentation. We do. Absolutely. We were very pleased, Representative Whips and I, to be able to work with the town. I want to thank, want to thank the board. I want to thank Carter and, and the chief for their advocacy because that's really what helped us to be able to make the, um, when, when we went back before uh, for the, the speaker and the Senate president and met with our respective Ways and Means Mike. folks to make the arguments for this, uh, it, it helps. It helps when you have the support of a community and that the need was there. So I really appreciate, uh, again, uh, the support of the board and Carter and the chief and to making sure and obviously, we're very happy that the governor didn't veto this out. That was a very happy with that. So it's two hundred twenty-five thousand yep. dollars. And um, as we were just talking about, what'll happen now is that EOPS will get um, a letter out to you, It'll, and basically just to say what the money will be used for. And uh, they, it's fairly quick turnaround that uh, they'll get the the real check out to you. Don't try to cash this one, <laughs> but uh, well, you can try it. But I just had Holly take a. A, a picture of it for bank deposit that won't work. <laughs> that's right. That's what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, anyway, we're very pleased to be able to do that for you, and we'll continue to work. I mean, we know that there are other needs that the community has, 
and uh, we're going to continue to work for those as well. Yep. So we're very pleased to uh, be able to present this to you tonight. Well deserved and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we should do maybe one. I, I, one I'd like to say at least um, not only uh, if there any of the other board members uh, have anything mm -hmm. to say about it, but um, I'd specifically like to say thank you on behalf of the town and being a part of the, the capital planning committee within the last fiscal year. Um, the department heads, Templeton's had some history where we have not been able to execute a good capital plan um, and, and, a, and use a budget for that. This last year, we were able to really look out to the department heads and, 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 and address the needs that they had, whether it was vehicles. Um, uh, Bob Skozik from DPW was able to, uh, he's gonna switch over um, from sand to a salt shed this year, which is gonna really help out um, in, the, in the cleanliness of the roads and manpower and otherwise. But from a capital planning perspective, this was a huge win for us because the flexibility that it gave us to, to take care of other pro projects right. and, and the chief needed the, you know, for the folks at home, what it's gonna be used for, the sally port, the generator, the generator that is going to be fitted exactly for what their needs are for the entire station, not just a single workstation, which is all the capability that we had. So this is absolutely huge and we, we, we're really happy to have uh, the team that we have on Beacon Hill. So I thank really appreciate you. That. Jim, appreciate that. Do you want to do a yeah, absolutely, Chief? Do you have anything that you'd like to say? Uh, this means a lot to the men at the station, men and women at the station, and the residents. When this is finally done, they're going to be able to. On, I believe it's going to be October fifth. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, it still, kind of looks like a small bomb went off in there because we're trying to fit everything <laughs> in, figure everything out, but. Um, Hopefully open house on October 5th and everybody will be able to come out and realize what a nice place it is. Right. Great. Great. That's a good thank idea. You might, oh, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. The uh, chair is all the way over. Thank you. Let's move over the chair. No, 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 you hold it. You hold it. You hold it. You're cashing it. How are you doing? Good. Yes. <laughs> We're working on that. Will we we'll just cut it up there? I, 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 I like to be the center. That's all right. I'm not that kind of face. Hey. So we, you know, I know that. Everybody in? Yeah. I take about 15, so I get a good one. <laughs> <laughs> one chin, Holly. One chin over there, please. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for all your help. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We'll see you soon. Keep you know I know that. We all are. We know that. Yeah. Well, that's I know your efforts. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. 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 Yes. All right. Um, let's see. Next on, uh, Louie, you are next on the uh, the agenda. You saw our, our representative and uh, the senator just left, but you're probably going to need a, a moment or two to... Uh, uh, just to connect to the Wi-Fi, and then I have everything I need up and running. Okay. Sorry again for my... Yep. Um, Louie, you're, I'm sorry, your, your last name again, Al... Al Alfano. Al so Louis Alfano is here tonight um, on pap on um, on behalf of Clear Gov. Um, he's going to be uh, giving us a presentation on how uh, his uh, their software, their web um, design, basically puts municipal information at at uh, constituents' fingertips. Um, it's not the first time Clear Gov has been here to give a presentation. I know. Um, 
Julie, you probably have, uh, not from Louie, but from one of their other reps, and uh, certainly Carter and uh, Holly have seen it before. But I thought we are in, um, it's a rough year for numbers. And um, I went to the, the kickoff event for the school district this morning, and Everybody's got numbers on their mind, and Dr. Kazvan talked about the explosion of questions and the uh, the um, the public's appetite for information. And where do I get this? What's this process? Um, the benefit is that we've had uh, people come out and say that they want to serve on serve within uh, the open positions advisory board. Um, reap the benefits for that, and they have a new person because they wanted to get involved. Um, Ms. Curio. Uh, Curcio, sorry. So um, there were a lot of questions about budget and otherwise, and the information is always out there. We're the first to tell you that. We're the first to say what page of the budget book. Um, we have a, a, a revamped website um, that we can all be very proud of. But again, it's still, you know, I think uh, they said in, in a famous movie, a movie, if you build it, they will come. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Um, put it packaging information in a way that can be consumed readily and easily is really uh, the reason why I asked Louie to come in and make a presentation tonight. Um, so he's going to take about 30 minutes or less to kind of give us an idea of how you can channel municipal data, live uh, municipal data, how a town can affect that data, and really present that data in the best way possible for the public. Uh, and speaking of the public, one thing I, I neglected to do was take um, public comments at the, in the beginning. Um, were, were there? You, okay, so there were. All right, Louis. While you're setting up, um, uh, let's let's take some uh, public comments if we have some <coughs> before we uh, proceed. You can't move the microphone. Hmm? You can't move the microphone. It's taped. Yeah, it, Sean, it should be able to pick him up <laughs> if he's just if he's sitting at the table. Mr. DeJoy, good to Thank see you. Thank you, uh, Tony DeJoy, uh, Miniman Drive, Templeton. Uh, having attended the school board meeting yesterday, uh, it's it's obvious that we're still have have um, a disconnect. I'll call it. Um, I think what I would like is for the board of selectmen to take an action to re to explore redoing the Narragansett Regional School District, uh, the the regional agreement. Uh, there's some real de disconnects in there where I feel I haven't seen the numbers we've asked the school committee for the numbers of how much different schools cost to operate and uh, my concern is that the town of Templeton is paying more than its fair share to operate another town school I don't have the facts to back that up but uh, hopefully we're gonna get those and um, in these trying economic times um, I think Templeton taxpayers need their money spent on their town services, the school being a service, but for our schools. And so uh, I would request that um, before they even get into the next budget, if possible, that we visit that agreement and whether we adjust shares or we've got to do something. And I think that's the first place to start so we can get um, a school budget that the town can afford. Okay. Um, just a quick uh, react, reactive question. Do you think a, that sort of review will be helpful for our current budget uh, crisis? No, because I don't think you can do anything that would affect it. Okay. Okay, so they already have their budget going forward. Yeah. Um, I don't, no, I, I, I don't think it will. Okay. Um, a couple meetings back. Um, Diane Haley Brooks, she's not here this evening, she's not feeling well, um, had said, I would really like to see on an agenda coming up soon um, a review of the, the, of the district agreement, um, probably to the point where it's not just a, a, a check of the uh, oil disp, uh, dipstick, but a, a much more comprehensive line by line. I think Mr. Bennett said the last mm, select board meeting, at least that I was here, that it really hasn't been addressed right. for many it's years. Supposed to I, I don't remember the number of years. Yeah. I wanted to say it was like 25 years or something. Was it, was it 1994 or 2004? Or? It was a cursory in 2004, 
um, re that was that was kind of looked at and filed, but it's uh, I don't even think it's and I believe Chris Casavant has stated this at a school committee meeting. It's not really on file in the state. It's they've looked a an updated well, copy is, is not there. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, as a as a citizen, not from an advisory, we may discuss this tomorrow. But um, you have a meeting tomorrow. Yeah, okay. uh, I think that it's important that that be looked at to see if it can be changed in any way to make it more equitable for the towns. Um, I mean, the, the high school and the middle school are a little bit different because the district owns those schools. Both towns, that that's fine. But where we have our own elementary schools. Um, I just don't personally, and I don't, again, I said I, I don't know for sure, but I don't think Templeton tax dollars should be going to pay for the school in another community, just like Phillipson tax dollars shouldn't be going to pay for Templeton schools either. Now, it may be a wash because it's, a, it's about an 80-20 split, even though the agreement says 84-16, if you look at the actual numbers, it's about 80-81 19 or 20 percent so so Phillipston does pay a little bit more so I don't know if the 80 percent we pay for Phillipston is equal to the set the 20 percent they pay for our school mm -hmm. and if it is then it's a wash and we don't get anywhere but um, okay and, and you know, I, I do believe that the school committee is gonna have to make some tough choices next year because I don't think things are getting better last night they they did or was that last night yeah Last night they did, they very much started in that um, discussion, but it did it did uh, go it the really other go direction. Yeah. I, I I think that they Wait, basically I think that they, I think they basically that we are yeah. right back at the same. I think place. they basically yeah. said we're not willing to discuss that yet. And right. Okay. So anything else, Tony? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Jim. Thank you for the time. Oh, you're, I'm sorry. Oh. I I just wanted to thank you, Tony, for that. I I think that it's a very wise decision. Also, as a board member, this discussion has come up on several occasions, so I would um, request that you put it on our next there board of selectmen meeting. That's what I was. Um, we should set a date, and we should set it tonight. That's that's. It's it. been a conversation in two separate uh, committees, that. including ours, that for several years just goes back and forth, and no one sets a date. I think it's time. I think we need to start reviewing. Um, because yeah next year they're gonna be in the same boat as is the town so we need to put it on Carter in my opinion uh, mr. chairman as you know um, the board uh, at your direction uh, to me invited the Phillipston select board to join them at your uh, October 2nd mm -hmm. workshop um, spurred along in part uh, by two uh, amendments that they're seeking, special legislation and an amendment to the uh, district agreement. Uh, and um, to each community who have asked for various amendments to the agreement, uh, they've been advised by the chairman of the school committee that towns may submit um, amendments that they <coughs> wish. Um, and I uh, might suggest that uh, involving the two communities in some sort of structured process to look at that I and that's not going to be a quick and easy process. It, it is not going to just be and, a board meeting. And um, uh, especially when one starts looking at the, the differential rates uh, for some perhaps differential services. Uh, and it requires, there's a whole state process you have to go through. Yep. Uh, might I suggest that having, uh, starting that discussion with the Phillipston selectmen on the two specific things they would like uh, to have some reaction from you on and then seeing if they want to move forward might be the best way to start. Right. Well, externally, um, we'll state exactly that course. Um, internally, I think that uh, we, we should at least arrange ourselves for the proper discussion. So um, I, don't, I don't think that we're going to get anywhere by one board having a singular conversation about it. What I think is going to be most effective if, if, if we have, um, whether we form a, a, a committee uh, or otherwise, um, I'd like to talk to Diane about it as the, the education uh, liaison from the board, but I think that we need a little bit more than a conversation, but it needs to start. I 100% agree. I totally agree. However, a date tonight um, to at least consider 
Um, I certainly think yeah. it's a wise we decision a, we to a start. Up. We can have the discussion on the retreat. So, so I know the process is not necessarily a quick process, yeah. but we if can. we could at least get the framework of, a, of a, a new agreement in place that essentially would affect the budgets. It'll affect the uh, school committee budget. It'll, yeah. it'll affect our budget uh, and, and quite possibly Phillipston's. So um, I just don't think we can go through this next budget cycle, status quo. Something's yeah. got to change. Yeah, totally. So totally. like you said at this, the joint meeting, and, and I kind of echoed it, um, we're going to be right back there next year. Sure. And it's not because the school committee is not trying, because I do believe they are. Um, I thought they made a very compelling argument for their budget last night. Um, so I, I just think that we've, we've got to take those next steps. I'd give them $50 million if I could. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's it, it comes. I understand. It comes back to whether it's a philosophical discussion or otherwise. It comes back to a revenue discussion. It and, does. Yeah. And, and I don't know if this is the time to interject, but um, there's a school district on the Cape whose citizens run a thrift store, specifically nonprofit, and they give 75k a year to the school. I mean, we're looking for new ideas. There's an idea. School. And the okay. kids at the high school need 200 hours of community service. It's something that maybe they could train in their in their community service. They could offer up some of their time for I their community service in a thrift store, the and the money go back to the school. Yeah, I hope the school district is. I mean, they, they, I know they have a very robust. Sitting at the kickoff today, I have all the trust in the world that they're thinking through these things and revenue and otherwise, and trying to engage their students. But, but I agree. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Chairman. Thank you. So can I get a clarification on this? We're going to start the conversation with the Phillipson Board of Selectmen on October 2nd at our meeting? That's that's my subjection subject yeah, to the board's we had, pleasure. We that, yeah, we had put that. That was in black and white as of the last time we met. Um, our last meeting, we, we had discussed that. that in black it would become and a fixed yeah. agenda it item if that's the board's pleasure. Yep. Yeah. Julie, like is that good enough? Fixed agenda. Okay. Is that good enough? We also have our retreat next week. Correct. Yeah. But yep. Okay. Is there any other public comments? Uh, seeing none. Mr. Alfano. Great. Good um, evening. Good evening. Well, thank you. Um, Thank you all for letting me be here tonight. I'm really excited to represent ClearGov and really show you folks what we're doing. Um, so I want to start off with just a little bit of background about ClearGov, who we are, what we're doing, and more importantly, why we're doing it. Um, so ClearGov is an organization that's been around for almost four years now. Uh, we're based right over in Maynard, Mass. Um, I've lived here in Massachusetts my whole life, actually just settled down in Lunenburg. Um, and we are striving to help create a community of modern data-driven governments. And really what we mean by that is we've noticed a lot of different fundamental shifts in the way that government is operating and more specifically in the way that government's interacting with its residents. Um, so I've put just three of them up here. One is information expectations. Um, Folks have never demanded information and expected information to be as readily available as they do today. I know I'm very guilty of it, maybe some of you folks are, where if you need an answer to something, you expect it to be on your smartphone, on your laptop, on your tablet. You expect it yesterday. Um, as far as social media, that's become a massive player in the way that governments are interacting with their residents. I can't tell you how many communities I speak with you know, week in and week out who are trying to maintain a, a very uh, consistent social media presence because they know that's where their residents are. They're meeting them on social media. They're engaging with information there. They're learning from their friends who are posting things. Um, so it's created a, a very new and interesting dynamic. And then certainly the emergence of cloud technology has made all of that so much easier. The ability to get information like this on any platform, anywhere that you are, the data is going to follow. So all of that comes into play with ClearGov because we feel like a lot of communities do a good job getting information out there. But there's a difference between getting information, maybe your budget, maybe projects, departmental issues, getting it out there and actually bridging the gap to a fundamental understanding for your residents. 
Um, so really where we come in is adding context to this information. We're trying to really help you to more efficiently um, communicate this information across any you know, stakeholders. This is all part of ClearGov's Insights platform, and what I'll be showing you tonight is actually all live. Um, it is cloud-based, so I'm going to toggle over here, and every example I'm showing, it's all accessible you know, on any device. We do have um, a tablet-friendly and a mobile-friendly version of this. Uh, I am going to be showing you the desktop version. Now, I bring up Natick, Massachusetts website because of this section down here. Um, in their finances uh, piece of their website, they actually pulled a ClearGov graphic out and put it right here. The same holds true for a lot of different communities across the country. We'll create any sort of web graphics. We'll integrate this directly with your website because we want you to be able to drive traffic. We want you to be able to provide your residents with a one-stop shop to really get a better understanding of Templeton from a glance. Now, what I'm showing you here, certainly we're not working with you folks yet. What we've done to create this page is we've gone to the Department of Revenue, we've gathered information, and we keep this as up to date as public information allows. Certainly, if you folks were to go live with ClearGov, we would take data directly from the source. We have a full data team in-house that would take information. It's just a simple download from your accounting system on your end, email it on over to us, and then our team goes to work mapping, making sure that everything looks perfect, customizing. This is really a turnkey solution. We don't want to add any work to your plates. We want to keep this as simple as possible. Now, Louie, when you say you've done this, this exists for any town in Massachusetts because it's all publicly available data. data. So I've already been using this when for a lot of basic information like median household income and things like that. But it, you know, when you say create, this stuff's already out there. So Correct. Yeah. And, and really what I mean by that, yes. So this page, it already exists. It's accessible to any one of you right now. Um, it is going to show some basic information. As you mentioned, the median uh, home value, the median household income, population. You can even drill down into this mm -hmm. to get more information. You'll notice as we scroll That's through, there's things, things like graphic population graphic graphs, graphic. population trends over time daytime population, certainly impacting the number of services you provide if that closely matches your population in general. Um, population by age group, what types of services are really going to be a focal point? All of this information is here. Um, I just wanted to show that it you know, does in fact exist Absolutely. publicly. Um, but scrolling down, this is really the meat and potatoes, You know, the financial overview. Again, this is real data we collected from the Department of Revenue. The big difference with partnering up with ClearGov is we would take your most recent data. We could even showcase your budgeted and proposed budgeted information right here. Budget to actuals, showcase that performance, things along those lines. And then scrolling into this information, it helps to give a clearer picture. I mentioned context up front of what those numbers actually mean. You know, quite frankly, when I look at $14.9 million, I don't know what that means. Right. That's To me, it just seems like a big number that I would love to see in my bank account. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have much context there to understand what that means. So scrolling down further, there's plenty of ways to normalize this information, make it accessible to anyone who wants to take a look. And then scrolling down further. What was that big green block there? Uh, so this is education. So 42 or 47.2 percent of the budget. <laughs> what a shocker! Yeah, and and <laughs> even contextualizing that education broken out further here. That's seven million and change. That's about 872 dollars per resident, give or take. And then that's 33 percent lower than similar communities. So we've added context not only by drilling this information down, boiling it down to its simpler pieces, but by comparing it to yourselves historic spend, and comparing it to your peers. And this is where it really gets pretty neat because you're able to, we're looking at just a, a default peer group here. Um, we've compiled this based off of some of the parameters below. But you're actually able to pull the data for each and every community in Massachusetts. We've done the heavy lifting. We've compiled all of that data that's publicly available. Now we give it to you in a format that's accessible, that's approachable, so you can see, okay, you know, what are those other communities and where do they stack up? 
how much more or less are we spending in each and every area of our budget? Right. And Louis, I just want to add, I had led off um, with why, you know, the, the why. Why did we invite you and all everything? It's not that this data doesn't exist. You know, I, I, the team that we have in town, it provides all this stuff. You know, any kind of schematic or diagram, um, we get that. And we have a great team that does that. I guess the, the, the differentiation that I make is that this is on demand and accessible. And it, it, more to your point of how you start let off with, it's how people want it and they want it now right. rather than trying to sift through six layers of websites to try and get it. It is there and our people do in town do a very good job doing that. Um, I see it and I appreciate it, but I also know who the who can consume this data too. Right. And and absolutely. I mean the the point that I want to get across is this is turnkey. Right. All of this is ready yep. waiting for you. Any resident can access this. Yep. You'll notice drill downs here to break down further into education. Yeah. What I'd like to do is actually go to, we call this Demoville USA. Um, this just has every example or close to every example of what we can really do to customize this for you. Um, certainly, you know, customizing the visuals, making this look and feel like your other web offerings, we want to do that for you. Um, scrolling down further here, you'll notice certainly, certainly the revenues, the expenditures, but then we have our fictional town administrator here, our town manager, John Smith, adding some context adding more information if there's a story behind these numbers if there was you know some some discussion leading into that final decision that you want to share with the public this is a great way to do that and make sure that everyone's able to access that similarly i mentioned budgets to actuals forecasts projections all of that can be put right here plainly um, this is actually a, a feature that it might seem a little bit minor just having this one graph a lot of communities are raving about this because their residents no longer have to drill into multiple PDFs to look at this information. They can view it side by side here. Um, scrolling down further, you'll notice quite a few different areas where we can add some context, add information. I, I like to mention this is tailorable as well. So if you wanted a new panel, if you wanted to put about us, if you wanted to put, you know, really anything that you can imagine, we can put that on there for you. Um, you know, it's a very quick process for us, even to the point where you might want an open checkbook. We can certainly do that. Now, I'm scrolling down here because I want to show one feature that gets a lot of folks really excited. A lot of residents we've noticed are engaging with this pretty regularly. Um, I myself, Lunenburg, is a, is a customer of ours and as a resident. I use this all the time, um, kind of avoid some construction. Um, this is the projects feature. You can do this in a couple of different ways. One is just thumbnails. One is a map, as you see here. And the benefit here is if you have any projects, whether they're you know, future projects, current projects, um, even past archived projects, you can present those very plainly to residents. You'll notice there's a subscribe button. And I do apologize. It's a little off the screen yeah. to the right. But there's a share on Facebook and Twitter. Um, that's available on every single panel on ClearGov. We want you to be able to, with one click, share this to your social media. Um, I mentioned up front, that's a, a huge way in which residents are consuming information. We know it's really tough. It's, it's a small part of your jobs. You have so much going on, but just to be able to share this with one click saves so much time, and it makes a lot of people really happy. Um, but something like this you know, goes a long way in showcasing What's coming up? You know, what are we doing? Do we, do we have any articles to support this? Do we have, you know, location? Really as much information as you want to show on each and every one of these projects, you're able to put right here in ClearGov. Again, this is all built and ready for you. You don't need to put in much effort to get a project up and going. Um, I actually built this one myself. All of the data here um, took about a little less than 10 minutes to put in. Um, if you figure that residents are going to subscribe to this, get push notifications via email um, if they actually want to, based off of updates, things like that, it's going to save a whole lot of time. And certainly we see a lot more communities putting FAQs and things like that online. Um, the other thing that I wanted to showcase here, it's a fairly new feature. Uh, this is our department dashboards. 
Our department dashboards are totally customizable. We've built the structure of them. We have templates ready to go out of the box for you, but we also give you the tools to customize these to your liking. We'll do that for you as well. Um, it really gives you a way to showcase what's going on department by department. So we'll look at the police department yeah, as an example. Um, you know, maybe you want to have a letter from the police chief. Maybe you want to have an about us. Whatever you want to have here, we have templates for. We also have a report builder. We can do this. We also give you the tools to do this. And thinking outside of just ClearGov's transparency profile, that report builder maybe takes one or two minutes to build out reports just because of how simple we've made it. You can pull custom data, which I did here, or you can pull financial data from your system, building out those graphics just in a minute or two. But really, this is a great way to show things like response time. You know, do we have a goal? Are we meeting that goal? Um, you know, how many calls do we receive? What are we looking at in terms of crime breakdowns? Um, going down here, certainly tying it to the budget and allowing drill down deeper into the police department budget, all the while seeing the practical application of that budget through these statistics. Right. Um, things that are a little bit more fun, you know, a night out or a fundraiser or anything like that. Anything that you feel is, is appropriate to showcase here on ClearGov, we can do for you. And again, all of this is accessible. There's no login, there's no password or anything for residents. It's public information. It's meant to be a one-stop shop to really help you to engage your residents, save you folks a lot of time and effort in the process, and certainly link out to other avenues, social media being a big one. Um, I tried to go through rather quickly. I know you folks have a lot to get to, and I feel really bad that I was a little bit late here today. No, you're fine. Um, fine. So I want to open it up, see if there are any questions, anything that anyone would like clarification on, anything like that. No, great presentation. Um, I have to say that we, we have gotten this presentation again yeah. in the past, and it's time to go with ClaireGov. I mean, I really do use it I, I, I do, yeah. and it's fantastic I think the residents would appreciate it too a lot of questions again you know we have a we just went through a, a website redesign and it it looks fantastic I think that we've done a really good job um, revamping what we have it's the data part it's that's what you led with that's what really sells it for me to say Finding data the way that you want it rather than saying um, to somebody, it's in our budget book. I don't know if they're going to go look at the budget book or not. Right. I would hope that they would or download it or otherwise, but maybe some of this, the data-driven items of our day-to-day -day operations, I think, is really where we, um, where we would make our money or at least be able to provide that level of uh, fidelity to the, the community to say, here is the answer. I don't know if, if Carter would want an open checkbook on... Uh, mm. on uh, only if they're uh, filling it <laughs> <laughs> but and, and we, we do. have we do have uh, you know we have those discussions why are we spending so much on school supplies uh, or I you know I never saw that the, we never saw this expenditure or something like that it's the data driven stuff that I really am impressed with um, with the the, the prep the the way that it's presented with clear glove it's just very simple it doesn't take a long time you don't get a little wheel that says <laughs> thinking or retrieving, mm -hmm. it's right there. Right, and, and I really appreciate you saying that. We put a lot of work into making this as accessible as possible mm -hmm. without watering it down because we want the information to be real, we want it to be impactful, we want there to be context, but we want it to be accessible yeah. more so than that because you know different people learn differently, different people are gonna look at you know raw data and maybe not understand it if there's a graphic, maybe they do, or vice versa. Yeah. So we wanted it to be um, presented in a couple of different ways and as approachable as yeah. possible. And the comparison with other towns, we have a lot of discussions about where we sit with other towns. I know you showed that briefly, but I think that you and I had discussed it before. That's configurable as well. Yes. Because um, I know, uh, you know, Mr. Terenzini will give us, based on data, a, a set list, like this is who we should be, here's our big 10 that we're against. That's where exactly okay. You're just you're so basically describing that situation. Exactly. Now. So what I'm going to do? Have to be. 
compared to whoever you say. You know, I don't want to be compared to Sandwich or something. Uh, I want to be compared to who my town administrator says. Here are the here are the communities I think that we really need to to balance ourselves against. Exactly, and and that's totally tailorable. Um, we can do that for you, but certainly the process of updating your we call them peer groups. Yeah. You can have multiple. Um, we have communities who they have perfect peer groups or close to perfect peer groups for a lot of different areas. Yeah. But we live in Massachusetts. Snow and ice removal can be dramatic. Um, we have some communities who have, you know, double the road miles or close to double the road miles of their peers. So it just throws that comparison out of out of whack because yeah. it doesn't make sense to compare snow and ice removal to towns that have half the road miles. So you can create multiple peer groups to have those apples to apples comparisons. And when you go in, <coughs> and I'll actually go in and just show you, it's a simple process. We have a full list, every community in Massachusetts. You can search through that list. So here, I just search for Templeton, and then it's a simple drag and drop into the middle. You can describe these, you can decide, is this gonna be the default? Is this available to the public? Um, what is this for? So it really gives you the means to you know, create peer groups for different rounds of comparison and have full control over you know, how you're comparing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, and certainly, and I won't, I won't dwell too much on this, there's a lot at play here. Um, the budgeting and forecasting tools, those are a different application. But the projects, the customize, you know, any sort of charts, if you wanted to build those, um, that's all included right here. And just to show you how easy that is, um, you know, it's just a matter of off to the left here, saying what kind of chart you'd like. If you want any legends, anything like that, what style of chart, what size. And then down below, what information are we pulling? Is it custom? Is it financial? Is it, you know, stemming from what ClearGov has already uploaded in, and then generating the graphic right there? So what kind of customer support? So if 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 we had somebody in in our uh, town structure who was trying to do something like that, and they hit a brick wall, they didn't know. You know, if you say it's easy. Well, maybe someone else didn't think it was that easy. Sure. What's the customer service for saying I'm trying to do this? What buttons do I press? Absolutely. Um, so the short answer is, you know, we have our hours of operation. We work generally 8 to 630, yep. somewhere in there. Um, but honestly, our customer success representatives, you would be assigned a dedicated person. Okay. Certainly, I'm not going to right. leave the picture. So any any questions you have, I'm always so accessible. There'd, there'd be first name basis. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's you're not you're not going to call into a call center. You're not going to worry about, Got OK, it. who am I getting? It's going to be me or your customer success representative. Um, and we're very responsive. We always guarantee a response, um, or if it's you know setting up time to just have a phone call, we guarantee that within 24 hours. Um, I haven't yet heard of an instance where it hasn't been same day. So very responsive. Um, we pride ourselves on that, and we're local. So you know certainly we, we want to uh, make sure that we're um, catering to you folks as best we can. Any other questions? Anyone in the room? Louis, thank you so much. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll leave my card mm -hmm. for a couple folks here. If okay. anyone has any, any questions after the demonstration. Yeah, and more, most importantly, um, you weren't here for the disclaimers, but this goes out on cable access and also YouTube. So I'd really like to, if anyone's watching this, uh, this replay, if anyone has any questions for Louis, um, whether you Thank send you. them direct or through us if you like I'd like to get some uh, public feedback as well to say that's exactly what I was looking for I'm tired of Mike telling me to go look at the budget book <laughs> go on, Mike. page 217 yeah. thank you well thank you yeah. uh, I guess the only question I have is do we have to vote on it or no it's mm -hmm. just a presentation um, it, 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 it's a pay service, so if, if we wind up having discussions late, um, down the road to say this is something we want to integrate into it, then we have that, then we wind up having that discussion. But um, yeah, it, 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 there's, it's fee based, it's not just um, right. drops out of the sky. Right, right. Uh, this is thank the, you all. Thank you, I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Oh, if I may, this is the kind of thing, Adam, if he has not circulated it to you before you leave tonight. We'll be circulating to you a worksheet in preparation for your retreat. 
next week. And if you think this is something you want to do, um, in the normal course of events, you would add that they would then go into the work plan and uh, then we would uh, get budget estimates and um, include it at full funding or include it at, at zero in, in the upcoming budget, depending right. upon where budget was. Yeah. But Perhaps what we'll be looking for next uh, next Wednesday are projects, things you'd like to see happen. Okay. And if this is one of those kinds of things, you you put okay. it on your sheet and the group Adam's decides. Adam's got to send that to yes. us. Okay. Okay, uh, moving along with the agenda, we are up to <coughs> item five, Delta. Community, committee appointments and vacancies, open space, council on aging, and cultural council. For open space, Carrie Novak isn't here, but she's being reappointed. Okay. And for cultural, Nicole Roberts is here. Hi, Nicole. I don't believe the other two for Council on Aging planned on being here, but they did want to be appointed. They did want to be, okay. Yeah, um, I'm surprised Catherine's not here um, because she was pretty vocal at the last meeting about being on there. So, but I'm, I'm glad that she is full, full steam ahead and wants to be on that. Uh, I move to a point as follows uh, on the Open Space Committee. Um, Carrie Novak for a one-year term expiring June 30th of 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? On the motion to uh, reappoint Carrie Novak to the Open Space Committee for a one year term, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Um, I move to appoint as follows for the Council on Aging Catherine Fulton for a one year term filling an unexpired term to expire June 30th of 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion for Catherine Fulton to the Council on Aging for a one year term? How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. I move to appoint Janice Lefevre. My Holly, am I pronouncing that correctly? It's Lefebvre. 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 Janice Lefebvre to the Council on Aging Board for a three-year term expiring June 30th of 2022. Second. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? On the motion to appoint Janice Lefebvre, Lefebvre to the Council on Aging Board for a three-year term, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. I move I, to appoint as follows, Cultural Council Nicole Roberts, three-year term. I would thank you very much for coming in. That was appreciated by all of us. Um, to ending 6-30-2022. Second. Great, on a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion? Nicole, do you have any anything you wanna say or uh, any I words? Thank you for uh, considering me for the organization and the committee. I think they do wonderful things with the within the community and surrounding communities. So I wanted to be part of that. Awesome. I think that's important. Um, many years ago, I used to be on the Cultural Council. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah. You're going to enjoy it. It's yeah. it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Great. Any other discussion on the motion for Nicole Roberts for the Cultural Council for a three-year term? How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry. Yes. Julie. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, that, um, that closes out that agenda item. Nicole, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Excellent. Good evening, Nicole. You too. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is Stonebridge. Mr. Terenzini. Uh, so about one year ago, um, we had a failure of the Stone Bridge. Uh, Stone Bridge is... Um, essentially a, a dike with a large culvert in it. Uh, and last fall, uh, the voters gave us $50,000 to look at various alternatives. 
uh, earlier this spring, we brought the consultant's report to you, uh, and they brought uh, four options. Uh, option, and, and I'm not going to try to put numbers to them because I might right. get I it understand. out of sync. Yep. Uh, one was a, a two-lane bridge uh, north of eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. The second was um, uh, a uh, eight-foot wide, ten-foot wide service bridge. Um, it would essentially uh, be blocked at both ends, um, but with a bridge that could handle an emergency vehicle, a light pickup truck, or the like. Uh, a little bit north of three hundred thousand. Uh, the next option was essentially the same thing, but with a narrower uh, pedestrian bridge that would not take vehicular traffic. Uh, and then finally, there was an option in which uh, we simply removed uh, and peeled it back and didn't uh, attempt to provide for uh, movement from one side to the other around $150,000, $160,000, uh, as I remember it. Uh, as a result of that uh, hearing, uh, there was a request to consider a one-lane vehicular bridge. Uh, we did uh, have the consultant look at that, uh, and that was uh, roughly um, $710,000, a little north of $700,000, um, driven to a large part by the need to signalize it because of the geometry, because of the curvature. Mm -hmm. um, it was not believed that it would get approved um, without signalization. Uh, subsequent uh, to that, or at that meeting, a private citizen um, asked the board for time to look at trying to find a way to fix it in place. And so this item was placed on hold for uh, roughly six weeks, yep. um, as I recall it. Uh, and I've given you um, uh, some text on that citizen's report back, uh, which essentially uh, he was not able to get the kind of, of answers that he'd hoped for either through um, a non-responsive contractors um, or others. And bear in mind, when we talk about Stonebridge, this is not, you know, the Roman culvert uh, arched stone bridge. This is essentially some granite stacked up on the sides with some heavy slabs <laughs> of granite kind of plopped across it as deck. Yep. Um, so uh, we are, um, I think, uh, at a decision point if we're going to try to do something at the fall town meeting. Uh, we did apply uh, for a culvert uh, restoration grant. Uh, we did not get that. There were about 70 applications statewide. We'll have a fuller report in this, uh, this weekly. Um, because we found out after we had finished this one up for you. Uh, there were about 70 applications statewide. There was enough money to do about 10. Uh, and that only would have been about 70,000 towards the cost. So what we are suggesting, uh, which would accommodate Mr. Haley's request that we not take immediate action because he remains hopeful that he can right. bring you some proposal that would allow it to be repaired in place uh, do do bear in mind that from an engineering standpoint, one of the problems with it uh, is the hydraulic flow through the relatively narrow opening uh, does not meet any of today's today's standards. So uh, there are no real viable sources of grant money for either the single lane bridge or the uh, two lane bridge. And when I look at town, projects and town needs, uh, and I look at the North Main Street Bridge, which will be two million plus or minus yeah. right now is the best estimate that we were able to give you. Right. Um, I, I just, I struggle to even think about seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars for the limited right. traffic that right. is out there. Um, I also struggle to think of doing nothing. Um, I, I'm not sure I want to be the guy that in 15 years, and they say, why are those barriers still there? It's, well, because Terenzini wouldn't do anything. <laughs> um, that would never happen. So never, 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 never. Uh, really? So I think, I think that we have a path forward uh, if we narrow it down to uh, options two and two A. Um, from a cost standpoint, 
uh, frankly, from a travel standpoint, uh, it is not a large problem to service the two houses on the other side uh, by going around. It is a detour uh, for folks who live in the area, but it's not a substantial right. detour. Uh, some folks would say 30 seconds. I'm thinking, you know, when we drove it a couple different ways, it's more like two, three minutes. Um, but it's not a substantial detour. And it has not posed thank yous to the cooperation of the folks on the Phillipston side uh, who plowed that end this past winter. It has not posed a problem to snow operations. It doesn't pose a problem to busing uh, okay. or anything else. That business isn't and affected, like they don't care it, what It really has not. We've had zero complaints. Okay. Doesn't mean there aren't some folks who would grouse and whisper in your ear, but we have had zero complaints in the office yep. uh, about any problems. If we narrowed it down to options two or two A, and frankly, I, if pressed, would support, I believe it's two A, I get yeah. lost sometimes. You said two A. Uh, which is the pedestrian, um, and if there were grants, we can, of course, go through those. Those would qualify for recreational uh, and open spaces from the CPC. Uh, the no bridge would qualify as well, but it really doesn't work as nicely. You can't get across. Right. Um, we'd be in the quarter of a million dollar to three million dollar range, as best we know today. And that could even be phased so that if you could get CPC money, let's say, but you couldn't get everything that you needed, you build the, uh, the piers, the abutments, with the seats in them that will take the bridge in the future. Yeah. You decide whether you go on an arched uh, pedestrian bridge or a flat pedestrian bridge. Um, so you can actually phase it. You can bid it that way. So what I am asking you uh, is to consider narrowing these options uh, and authorizing me to go to uh, the CPC uh, to present uh, options one, two, and two A, um, and to seek from them funding for the design and permitting to get to around 75%. Not actual bid documents, but the permitting and final design. And then I think we could get that done in time for next spring's town meeting at which time we can go back to the well, looking at the uh, covert placement program, looking at other grant programs, and looking for uh, additional CPC funding hmm. um, without trying to do it all in one giant bite of the apple. Because all we have right now is the best schematic design. The other thing is we need, uh, and we've started this, additional property survey so we can more clearly identify how much land we need from the several abutters mm -hmm. to make sure we can get the canoe launch in, we can get the parking spaces right. in, and have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Because if they all said no, then we have to maybe what we are doing is just peeling it back and calling it a day. Right. Um, so but we don't that know that we can't proceed without you know, we have a sense of it but we need better boundary survey which we should have by uh, late october to mid or late september to mid october but by then we will have missed the window right to go to the cpc and maybe yep. try to get some money for the fall town meeting <coughs> so, so that's that's what we're asking for is for you to narrow the options uh, and authorize us to go discuss uh, funding uh, of design and permitting for those options. Before anyone makes any motion or discussion wise, I just want to clarify so when we talk options one, two, and two A, not in the order that you presented them, because you you first we're not looking at doing a two lane. Um I can't, I what, what can't is, what recommend it. That doesn't mean two. that isn't what the board wants to yeah, do. What I do is what the option board option one as you option one is essentially peeling it back and there's no pedestrian or movement from side to side. You're opening it up. Okay, two is service bridge? Uh, two is the service bridge. Okay, and two A is pedestrian? Pedestrian bridge. That's perfect, that's, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same sheet. 
One was no bridge, peeling it back. Two is a service bridge. If they had to move a vehicle, yeah. it's, it's basically uh, bo uh, bollards are installed or some by the, by barrier. The, yeah. Removable bollards. Removable yeah. bollards. By the time you get them undone, basically, the right. truck would have been around the other side. Yeah, it was really a function of necessity to do that or pedestrian where you wind up having a little bit more of a recreational, which I thought was a great idea. Right. And the board may wish to do any other the one lane or the two lane, that's for the board. Does that any, anyone decide. have any questions or clarifications? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Skozik. Mr. Chairman, Board, Bob Skozik, Temple right. DPW. Um, I was, I haven't had time to discuss it with Carter, but if this is going to be a long drawn out procedure, which it sounds like, we really should think about, even if it's us, removing the corrugation and peeling it back a little bit because between the beavers and the collapsing, if we do have another flood and it breaks over, it's just going to take more of the bridge out that's existing now. Uh, so you're, you're, you're saying to take out the corrugated, I know what you're saying is gravel and granite that's well, around not, a it's corrugated. Not, it's not corrugated, but we may end up at some point removing some more of the top so we can get in there and, and keep it cleaner. Okay, as a preventative measure. Yeah, I mean, right now the yeah. flow between the beavers and the collapsing of some of the granite and the corrugated pipe, um, it, it's not flowing its full capacity yeah. now. And if we do, boy, which we get in heavy rains, and uh, we, it depends on the winter, if we do have another break over, it, it, you're going to lose a lot more of that bridge. Wow. Mm -hmm. If we remove that corrugation and some uh, blocking and put some... Tr uh, Rip wrap on it to keep it open. Right. You're gonna. I can you're gonna that. save more at the bridge yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah, how does that change? He doesn't need a vote. He doesn't need a vote from the board. I think he's just advising you that he may have to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. Because we can't. If we, do we don't want to have a collapse and then cause a, a potential problem, we would have to notify the concom. Uh, and do some other things, but uh, I don't. Um, I don't disagree with you. I mean, you, you know, way, way forward sure is different aware. than what he needs to do preventative maintenance yeah. wide, wise. Right. And I did talk to Cotter about um, putting some temporary guardrails down there and removing the cement barriers. Because I mean, this is going to be drawn out for a while. It's not going to be something that's going to happen real quick, anyways. And they can be removed if something does progress and change in the right. future but we should really think about getting that opened up for the flow and okay. um, I've been down there to look do we have any issues now with people trying to get across it or well I don't I haven't heard of any issues people trying to cross it but I removed all the plastic barriers because there must have been kids down there throwing them out in the pond and we had to borrow a boat to go get a couple of them um, but it is a hazard. It'll be less of a hazard if it was opened up where it's collapsed. And, um, okay. Are we we'll still waiting any answers from Mr. Haley or is he out of the equation? Um, I, I mean, I did, I, before I put this into your uh, report, I sent Mr. Haley first a draft. Um, and then when I had a little bit of a change of heart where I felt when I just couldn't not make some sort of recommendation. Um, I sent that to him as well, so he could at least see the document you would have. Um, and I didn't uh, have any response from him as to, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I mean, basically, he's, just not he's exhausted, answers. I think, yeah. uh, what his hoped for sources had been. I, and I st still think that we're getting somewhere with it. You know, there's the historical boulder that's right behind behind it. Um, I stopped to read it. I understand where the historical, um, you know, why he would want to make sure that there's um, some attention to it. But there's no one trying to get to a grist mill or a, you know, lumber yard anymore. So I not try. I don't think we're trying to preserve it for that, but we okay. are trying to preserve it to say the stone bridge is still there. It's now a recreation place, or it's a it's a service bridge. 
or otherwise. So I think we're going on. We're you know we're we're proceeding on with um, the spirit of maintaining it. They they just not the way that he had envisioned when he came to the board. Um, I think that was when I called in. You you guys got the full report from the from the architect. But I think we're getting there. He's just he's not getting as much responses uh, as as he had hoped. Um, the, the question I have just been asked was, what have we spent so far? Um, it won't show like this on your expense report because it's expended. We have a commitment to mm -hmm. expend it. But we will be around $47,000 uh, to get through this phase so far. And you've got another... I'm going to tell you 300 and 300,000 plus or minus, um, depending upon the added survey we get, what that tells us, permitting. That can always be a tricky one. You never know what you're going to get. Ever, yeah, whatever we choose. Requirements. And, exactly. Uh, timing. Yep. Um, but it, we're about 47.5 in at this point. Any other discussion? Anything good? No, it's just, I don't know. It's almost uh, leave it to the beavers and have a recreation area. It's, it's a bridge that really serves no really meaningful, important, other than it being, you know, it being old and therefore some people think that it's valuable and they want to hang on to some past stuff. An idea and, of getting and, and you can't known. it's like trying to hang on to the shuffle boards on the Templeton Common. I, I understand, you know, thinking, but I gotta look at the dollars and cents, is it is it truly worth it? And I just I just don't see it. Right. It's you know, Jersey barriers on both sides and let the beavers have it and people want to go fishing walking pictures whatever uh, there is another way around yeah it's it's a couple of minutes uh, you know maybe give or take depending on the weather this that and the other thing could be five minutes could be less but I just we have way more important things that need attention more attention than I mean, I, I, again, I, I get people want to hang on to some, but sometimes you just, you need to let go. And it's, you know, you can take pictures, you can put up a mind, you do whatever you want if they, private sources want to do that and stuff. But as a board member, thinking about the town as a whole, and, and Bob's, I've seen him, he's out there about on roads, he's, he's marking stuff, he's out, I've seen him out with his crew, he, he's, he's not sitting in the office, he, he's out there looking at stuff and trying to get as much done on these various roads that we travel on, and, and uh, one road in particular, you know, you used to go down it, it's, uh, last night we heard one of the school committee members, I live on Rolston Road, I can't travel, you know, it's almost a road you can't almost drive down, I said, well, I live on one too, and there's other people that do. And it's just, uh, this, this is, in my opinion, is way down the bottom of the list of priorities. And I know if you, if some point in time, you some board, another board decides they want to fix it, it's going to be more expensive, but I, I just think there are more important things that need attention and dollars than, than yeah. this. And it'd be a fantastic recreation area, and it's, uh, that's my opinion. Give it to the beavers. But all right. So tonight we can, um, you know, give. And I'm not against Mi exploring the CPC and see yeah. what see what they say. So if let's yeah. Say. I mean, yeah. let's give Carter I mean, that direction. I was the talking. I'm just not, you know, all in on rebuilding something big. Yes, Mr. Therrington. May, may I just say that if it was not for the availability of CPC funds, and then possibly. Uh, uh, covered restoration and some other grant programs. I would probably uh, be asking you just to let Bob go in with the backhoe and peel the roof off and try to stabilize it and figure out 
how we could make it as safe as possible from a liability standpoint. Uh, because from a tax levy standpoint, um, beyond that, I can't think of anything that would be much lower on my, my list. But we do have the CPC monies. It's not widely used. And this is a perfect example of town infrastructure that we think is eligible for that right. program. Well, I, I, I would like to give you the guidance to go through, especially as we said, you know, items one, two, and two A being no bridge, a service bridge, or pedestrian. Um, you can see the merits in that, but if if you need some direction, then I, I think the board at well, least I, I agrees just, on. I, I'm not comfortable just going and doing that on my own without the board having settled oh, yep, upon. You're going to get Does it. Does that have to be um, a motion? Yes. The options. I move to authorize the town administrator to proceed with. Further development of options one, no bridge, two, service bridge, and two A, pedestrian bridge, and to approach the CPC for possible funding of the next phase of design and permitting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I'm not sure that I agree with approaching the CPC at this point. Okay. Financially, I think that there are other um, projects in town right now that have been put on hold, including CPC Scout stuff. Hall. Okay. And there are a couple of other CPCs right now that just need to get kicked back up a list. Um, so I'm a little concerned, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Options one and two sound good. I agree with Jeff on several of his comments as well. Um, I don't agree with approaching CPC though. Okay. Just wanted to make that known. Is there any other discussion? Should we amend the motion? Well, I mean, do you do you agree with what you, we said? I mean, we, sure, we can Are amend we the motion. Are we also talking the veterans? Is it is it affect the veterans with all that situation? <laughs> um, no. If, if I might just uh, try to add some light to that, uh, we need to go to the CPC. Um, for additional funds for Scout Hall. Uh, there are not sufficient dollars uh, to complete it based upon the change in the economy and some other things that happened during the course of the project. Uh, I don't want to belabor it. Bottom line is the, the market changed over the course of the project. There's money there for the um, uh, Veterans Park. I don't know if they need additional money, but they have over a million dollars there. Very little of the money has been invested back into the community. Who sets the priority? So I think um, Julie's they, really kind of going Who sets down the priority, I guess, is, yeah. yeah. Who sets your priorities? If, because we're, that's what we're saying is that, that Scout Hall should be higher on a priority than a bridge that is As not should used. Veterans Park Project. Absolutely. And uh, once you start going out, I... I it's just this. The bridge has come up on several occasions again at these meetings. I think we should just continue with the vote. Um, the motion's been made. Someone can second that. I just wanted to give out my voice, my opinion on it. No, I think that's an so excellent point. So we can point. go ahead at this point and just vote that. Okay. With And, and your discussion point is we need to prioritize, prioritize. the CPC because I, I everyone's coming out of the woodwork to go toward the CPC. Yeah. Trust me. With regards to the Veterans Park, and I emailed John Henshaw about this, and he was he came back and he said he was aware of it and he was comfortable that there's twenty five thousand dollars left of CP money, CPC money sitting, uh, and, and I say sitting there that was there was fifty thousand appropriated from CPC to go towards I think the, the demolition of go around straight and there's 25,000 sitting there and I asked him about that and I, I went back and I read the uh, town meeting vote and stuff for it and he said that 50,000 was not only for uh, at least from CPC's viewpoint that 50,000 was for the demolition and for any further work towards yeah. the park so there is 25 grand of CPC money sitting there I just don't think it's been talked about brought up but it is there. But again, with Julie's, 
you know, there, there's a list of priorities and Stonebridge. I'm not against, uh, and if God is looking for, if that's what he's looking for, permission to go to see what CPC says, yeah. I, I'm fine with that. Uh, because if you don't ask or you don't talk with them, then we're never going to know. They might say, you know what, no, nah, that's not what we want to spend that, that, this money on. You, right. know, you don't know. So yeah, I'm not opposed and, to And the key word in there is possible, you know, it, 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 in terms of an, a, a motion being an exploratory. But I, I certainly think that that's oh, a very possible. good point is. Um, we will brief them on the other two projects. Yeah. We'll be prepared to get that done next week. Okay. So. We have a motion that's been seconded. Uh, with discussion, any further discussion on the motion to authorize the town administrator to proceed with uh, options and possible fund, possible CPC funding? How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Harry? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank I you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, next item is uh, the Veterans Park project. And again, the, uh, the, the, uh, for those here and those watching, the, um, there's been a preamble for a lot of these discussions because it's in the weekly report. So there's already been uh, ample discussion, at least not ample discussion, information being presented. So thank you for that. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so this was the uh, the satellite view from when the building was there on the front page. Um, and the second page shows you uh, that there is a reserved right of way uh, across the property. So the sketch of the development uh, shows the uh, park occurring uh, at the front of the property, towards the back of the property, uh, two rows of parking, uh, depending upon final dimensions. Um, we'd either have to maybe cut that back a little bit uh, to one row or get some uh, additional uh, uh, rights to use some of the Army Corps' lands. Uh, the important thing here is you cannot block the right-of-way easement. Uh, and because of the parking, we can't put a gate up very close to the road. Um, however, we have people parking in that now. And so uh, what I did not have time to do uh, in the interval uh, was to get together with uh, the chief of police and talk about uh, what kind of parking uh, ban this board could adopt and we could then uh, in enforce. Um, I think that the proper settling upon um, the proper parking restriction, but no parking within the right of way, certainly no parking overnight anywhere on the property, setting a fine for that. Uh, and you have the right to do that because um, you have control of town property. Right. So there's no posted traffic order that needs to be issued. You're not on the street. Uh, so it, it's simpler uh, than issuing a traffic order. Um, so I, I just I just want to make sure everybody understands that. So that will be an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, we've given you kind of an update on what the concern was, the file search that we did, and what the options are. Uh, and even if you did a full 21E, frankly, you could do soil borings in there. And if you're four feet away from where that spill was, $30,000 later, and you just you missed it. You missed it by four feet. That's what happens. Uh, but we've not had any reported outbreaks, um, and no one being aware of any incident other than the complainant that we could find. And Sheila did a lot of trying to talk with people. We do have the asbestos removal report mm -hmm. uh, from when the demolition was done. There's nothing in the demolition uh, contract or in the asbestos report or in any of the reports at that time that lead us to believe there's another problem there. So I leave it to your judgment. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the town administrator to proceed with the development of the Veterans Park and to report back on reasonable means and methods to control unauthorized access and parking. Second. We have a motion and a second 
Any discussion? Um, Julie, you, you mean with this site, correct? Correct. I, I concur. I absolutely concur. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, on a motion that's been seconded, um, uh, made and seconded for the town administrator to proceed with the development of the Veterans Park as presented. Uh, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, uh, moving out of new business into old business. Um, I see on our agenda that we have none, but in the, the weekly report, um, Carter, I saw that uh, Mr. Arsenault um, did choose to um, appeal the decision of this board. He did, so um, as was laid out in the motion, um, mm -hmm. Uh, I did place the suspension on hold. Yes. Uh, I did meet with him um, uh, again today uh, on some adjustments he would like to see to the agreement. I've told him to try to keep it, I want to try to keep this at least moving along. Okay. I will draft it, get him back in next Wednesday so he can review it, okay. make sure it's saying what it is that he wants to say and get it on the board's agenda for relief that he's seeking from the agreement. Um, and then you'll make your decision on that. Okay. Uh, and the ABCC, um, they'll send us a notice of when uh, the hearing is going to be held. Uh, we may have to prepare actual transcripts uh, of the two hearings. Uh, so we're um, bringing in some temp staff to start preparing those. Um, and, and that's really the best I can tell you right okay. now. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. So can you clarify that? So he has gotten no suspension for not following procedure, correct? Correct. It's on hold. Correct. correct. If he- Because he appealed to the ABCC. And if, he, his right. and if he appealed to the ABCC and they overturned it, you could be found responsible to paying him. If we had stopped. If or his lost revenues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so that's that's why we encourage you to do it that way, and that's why the board went in that okay. direction. So in the interim, is he utilizing? No, that's, no, no. He is, is now. So they're just going in and out of the back door of the no, third no, no, journal, no, no, right? No, no, no. It's locked. It's do locked. Do we know that for a fact? Has he agreed to do that? Because it sounds like he's not he, doing it. He, if he did it. He's appealing. I've he did it. I've checked it twice. We'll have the police periodically check it. periodic checks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Because that was big. Th Julie, that's an excellent point. And here's where, so he's you know, that, doing that ratcheting. Some of it. Right. But if he were to not, if he were to not and continue um, basically, as we had said in our meeting, thumb in the nose towards the, the agreement that we had made, I would not think his, his appeal to ABCC would be very favorable. And, and it would be an yeah. additional cause I, I, I agree. for a, a show cause yeah. hearing. We're talking about public safety. License. He does not have a, um, a control on public safety. That's why he comes to us and asks if he can run that business. And when we see that he is not um, one thing I took keen interest in the, all the years of watching um, this board is how diligent this board has been to say, what are you doing to protect your patrons, the public safety and otherwise? It's been very good. It's, it's one of the lasting things that has stayed with me in watching the board. And to carry that on to say, we're protecting. I, I understand that he protects, he talked about, you know, he didn't want his patrons to fall down on their face by walking up through and everything. You know, I, I was attending the meeting remotely and I brought up the, the overhead just so I can understand. It's not like we're the bad guys and want him to close right. his business. That's not, uh, uh, it's converse to that. But in this situation where, where you have a related fatality, we wanted him to take that agreement that some consider to be 
um, a light agreement. I know that the, the family of the deceased thought it was a light agreement, and we want him to pay attention to that and comply with it, and this is part of the process to make that happen. And as far as old business, I just wanted to make sure that we were uh, aware of that and that um, if people in the public were looking for, well, what happened with that? He will they be have seeking. not closed. They did not close for a yeah. week. He, uh, Mr. Rushnell did appeal this board's decision to close him for a week or longer if he did not comply. He will be seeking relief uh, from two of the conditions, but, and I've offered to write it just to try to sure. be pro-business to try to Absolutely, we're Keep completely that open to that. Brief a little bit tighter, hopefully. Yep. Um, and we'll try to have that in front of you for the 11th. Okay. Um, any other old business or items from the, the weekly report that you needed uh, additional verification or anything on? I, t I figured the old business was a good, good opportunity to do that since um, it's part of the agenda packet, the weekly report. Uh, hearing nothing, we'll move into board and staff member comments. Um, Jeff, it looks like you've got uh, one on print. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was I was appointed to the uh, elementary school building committee. I've been to two meetings since July one, and I had heard something about this before I started serving on it. A, a question from someone about parking in front of the fire station and stuff. So last week, it, it did come up, uh, and uh, there was some cost associated with some things, and it was just a general discussion. It wasn't, uh, but it, it came up. And apparently there, is a, there was a storage issue, so they are, they are looking into, considering, talking about a storage shed facility on the grounds of the, the new elementary school. The cost is about a hundred grand. I don't know if it's gold plated, platinum, uh, if, if it has a TV and serves your beer, coffee, what? But, and apparently they it will take up, right now I guess they've, they've looked at a place of sitting it where it would take up some parking. Mm. So they have been conversing I, I guess so far amongst themselves. I don't know if it's made it way to Carter or anyone else, but uh, how long they have, the committee has, as I became aware of it at this second meeting. Uh, last week they actually asked, well, maybe we could get some parking spaces in front of the Templeton Center Fire Station. And then uh, the, the school superintendent, it, and it was, again, this is just sitting here, I guess I think he was like just thinking aloud maybe we could see if we could put the storage over there but then it was like oh well we might need electricity so they they nix that so they but they're talking about parking and just i recall being on the uh common improvement committee and the town actually back in 2010 employed or hired mrpc to do a common uh improvement master plan mm -hmm. And they spent money and they did some research and they found that there are some restrictions in certain different groups that, uh, or certain entities that uh, donated land to the town up in front of the Boynton Library, over in front of the Country Mischief, that little piece there. Uh, the common in front of the, the area in front of the First Church and then the area in front of uh, the fire station. And uh, members of the Historical Society, Brian Tangway and the town, I call him the town historian, I've known Harry all, all my life. Uh, but he's very up to speed on these old stuff and he said there, there's a, it belongs to somebody, it, it, the town you know, actually doesn't really have total control over that and, and the school, you, you just can't do this. And I recall be, being on the committee and, and that whole process, so I went to the assessor's office and uh, they're very efficient. And I said, I don't need it like yesterday, but by today. And they said, ah, no problem. I'll, I'll look into that. She goes, the assistant, I love doing that stuff. So they, they looked into it. And back in 1909, it's the, there was a grant to that section. And I'll give this to Kat if he wants to have researched, whatever. This is on file, the Worcester County deeds. 
there was a piece of land that was granted to the Village Improvement Society. And it, it gives out the parcel name and, and all of the dimensions, you know, uh, hence three rod and 15 links and, you know, real old school uh, measurement. But it is there. Uh, it does match up with the Common Improvement Master Plan. It matched up with what Harry and Brian Tangaway told me. Uh, so, again, this is a little detail. Even if they came to the Board of Selectmen, and, and just in a layman view from me looking at this, I don't even think the Board of Selectmen, because this says there is a piece in here that they gave it to the town Some when they first staked out Templeton. I think it's the center. There's a, and I have it all, it's, it's all included here. She found all the stuff. Uh, it just it's kind of tough to read. Some of it's in, uh, in longhand. But I, Impressive. You, you can read it, and it, it points out who gave what, it, like in front of Boynton Road uh, in 1880-something or 70. Wellington Road. There was a chunk, because there used to be like the fire station and before the school was built there, I guess that little parcel, and they gave permission for a, a sewer drain or the ditch to be, you know, go through this, across this property by this stone wall. Yeah. I mean, it's all there. So anything that, you know, if the school's, but, you know, that committee is thinking about doing this, uh, like I said, if this was gathered I was wondering if you could connect the dots for me. So they're not allowed. You, they're not allowed. They to could, that could not be done. And I, like I said, I legally I probably need some more research. But just from what I look at this, the, this village improvement society, I don't know who, what it is. It, it may go back. It, it it may be one of those things that's technically still there, but it just hasn't been looked at. So that was my issue, uh, you know, and. Uh, next meeting next week, I am going to broach this subject. That you know. It <laughs> so two things: the, they're not allowed to pa park in front of the fire station. Okay. That's not the, allowed the, because of this. They won't. You won't be able to do. Even if they, if, I believe, even if they came to the board of selectmen, we would not be able to give approval to the, to cut parking and, and pave more into this grass area because of these deed restrictions and that are on file. The second thing you said, which caught my attention, was the redirection of the water across Wellington well, Road. Again, th no, this is, oh, oh, way, way, this goes way back. Like I said, there was a stone wall and this and that, but it's all in these these grants. Because that these was different a question from one of our constituents. Uh, that but it's it doesn't, that doesn't pertain today because, like I said, that was, where that school was built, there was it was a field or, or something else way back in the day. Can you speak to that, Mr. Solzik? I know, I'm, I'm working Please. on the drainage. I'm sorry, Bob Solzik from Templeton TTW. The Wilmington side, there is an easement, and that drainage all runs down towards Dudley Road and crosses Dudley Road. We are um, in the middle of cleaning the brush and maintaining that part of the stretch of that easement drain now mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of water that goes through there so that that easement is still in effect because I checked and that was in this report what he just said well so I a, before I, Mike a went up it's a, a deed granting yeah granting you know, gifting the water this land to, to the town and this and that it's been there like I said I think it's 18 because someone thought that might be a problem going forward right. that that water was uh, Oh, well, it hasn't been maintained in years. This, um, yeah, no, but this was granted uh, 1881. We're talking like a small plot of land, or are we talking about the, uh, a large plot of land? We start, you started talking about storage shed, right? Like that, a 20-foot container it, it size doesn't, storage shed? $100,000. Uh, the school has requested a, a shed ma of maintenance for, for a shed for maintenance equipment. Apparently, so lost in this big plan was, and I question. I would have to question everybody from the OPM who was supposed to look out for the town's interest because that is a town project, a town building. It's not a school district project. So I don't know why the school would be you know, has so much input. But don't don't get me started on that. 
But this parking thing came about because of the placement of this storage shed that they want to build. Uh, how big and all that, the dimensions, I, but I'm just, the price tag is $100,000 is, is what the amount is listed for. And that brought up the parking issue, and that brought up discussion about the historical context and who would be allowed if, you know, to place any parking more than what's that little, it's like a crossroad in front of that fire station at one time, and then there was like a little parking when they built that fire station, because they used to be a dumping in on that plot of land. So Jeff, how do we get to a coherent point in what is requested and then whose decision this uh, is it all i'm saying is the building is committee's if, job if what, what at what point what is the trigger point for them to come to us if all, they started I mean, talking to the contractors and try to yeah. bring them back in uh, and I, I yeah, I mean, it's not a Hardy here. Boys mystery. I mean, it's not, I got it. It's 1909. It's cursive writing and things like that, and it's awesome. However, we have to get to a point and make a decision but to say, yeah. This is an official document uh, and restriction on the registry of deeds that has not been changed. Mm -hmm. So, you, and this is what happens so many times. People forget That's about this context, missing. and they go back, and they just start tearing and cutting. And then if somebody shows up and says, hey, what the hell are you doing over here? They would have legal and precedent. Then we, I we spend yeah. money, then we got to spend money to tear it up and regrass it. And my my only point of bringing this forward is, in case it comes before this board or someone that committee says, "Hey, we're going to do this or this," and the bills, you know, we, it's in the weekly warrant. The school. You know, Fontaine Brothers is like a million something that yep. was just paid and, and yep. furniture and all this stuff. If that gets to a point where it's discussion, like we're going to try to do this and it comes here, I That's want them, everyone to be aware of okay. these things. So if we go to vote on it, we have all pertinent stuff. We can say, whoa, we have to check on this to see if we can even if give you even permission or if we can even do that if we can even vote in other and words the other item that was brought to me by Brian Tangway was the historical society for many years has been redoing the Grange Hall yes and that, there's talk that, of, I mean it's getting their it's progress not finished on but it's getting close yep. you know at some point in time it's going to be finished and it's it, it was an old meeting call and stuff there is a chance that you could use it for some functions, but there is no parking. Right. Yeah, no worries. And the Historical Society has been, uh, it's a, it's the gentleman, I, I believe, his, it's an old Templeton family, but he does not live uh, in town now. I have his name and address. Uh, the Historical Society can't, doesn't have the money to buy it. There is a off of South Road, generally across from the elementary school, it's a half an acre uh, that they had considered trying to buy for parking for the Grange Hall. Uh, CPC is a possible source uh, to see. And Brian's thought was, uh, and it, it, it kind of makes sense, but was there an if address the town. On was there an address on? You said it's along South Road? Uh, because the uh, the Grange is on Hubbardston Road. Yes, I I would have to get the the exact okay. uh, piece of address. I did I did not get that. Uh, but the short point is, Brian's point was if the town could get possession of that half acre, it could create parking for the Grange that could possibly be shared with the school and, and historical society uh, and I'm not pre and I'm not you know suggesting that's an avenue I'm just putting this that this is a thought an idea or something that yeah. exists in the future uh, certainly right now on this financial thing that you know I, I mean know. that's not time to buy now but again this is another piece of this puzzle if we are looking for parking uh, and not just a couple of years ago, we were considering trying to get the old video hut. Uh, it's actually my father's old gas station from way back when, but it's this half, this found by the first church in Tumbleton Center. It's that building that's been, looks like it's been built and added on and then tore apart and then read, and it's been sitting there. And uh, 
I think the back taxes are like 30 grand or something. Uh, there was talk at one time of the town obtaining that for parking. It goes back to the common master plan in 2010 for like the crafts fair and now the mac and cheese, motor palooza, anything on the common. We're always looking for a little extra parking and the town had talked about it and Alan Mayo had started looking into grant and this and that to get it. But, you know, that's, again, that has ceased. Thanks. But again, the, the, the information about the common, I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the sure. board in case it goes, you know, if, if, if by chance someone had brought this forward. These are the things that well, it sounds like we it need to be aware of so we can just say, you know what, we'd like to accommodate that we would think about doing that, but we can't because of these legal documents. Do we have to give that to Carter to hand it to If he our wants to, if he yeah. wants it, that'd be helpful. We'll turn it over to it, council. It came from the assessor's office. They were very good about looking up the information. Okay. So Village Improvement Society. The Village Improvement Society. I mean, but it's it was filed the, uh, and it has not the been updated the or changed. The village people didn't have someone it. Someone in that thing can come society. along, and you know that's how it always goes. Well, well, at least that drainage uh, issue was we, brought up in there. Well, that was an easement way, yeah, way back then. I back mean, in I, I looked into it before Mike did just for that drainage easement. Um, I didn't go far as he did with up there. I did go into the easement. So. Yeah. And sometimes different boards, committees, they make a decision. They say, hey, we're going to do this. And totally unaware of these side the things. And sometimes they come back to bite you after you've spent money or you get spend a lot of time and energy getting everything lined up. And somebody says, hey, by the way, do you know about this? Uh, mm, oh, uh, and, and we paid for that study. The town paid for that study yeah. for MRPC. And some of this is in there. It was revisited, uh, it was pointed out like in 1980, 81. In that, it's uh, in that uh, report that is on the town website. <coughs> so that would be a good job for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just if, uh, my intent for bringing that up was to make the board and everyone aware of that those restrictions uh, are in place and we, we can't chew up the common for parking even I don't think even if we wanted to because of those and it's and it's and it's not even on the school work yeah. area anyways Fair. you know and I thought we had this great plan that there was all kinds of uh, enough parking for that project I'm sure there's going to be a lot of um, don't be shaking your head at me like that Terry do you have anything so uh -huh. thank you Ms. Chair. Absolutely. I just Julie, you want no, to talk I'm about good. anything? No. Ms. Terrence, a couple quick things to follow up on what Jeff has said. They did submit um, a request that we consider uh, doing some parking there. So uh, I sent that over to the building inspector and to Lori just to start with the basics of can it be done in zoning? And if the answer is no, then it's no. If the answer is yes, then we can look at some additional steps and certainly the land issue uh, and whether or not there might be any deed restriction would be the best, next uh, most opportune thing. Uh, I will say that please remember that we have the study out there on the fire mm -hmm. services and so I would be um, hard pressed to recommend any additional development of the site of anything for any reason till we have that study in hand and this board has been been able to give it. I, I, I don't know what's going to come out of that, uh, but this is always one of those things of, you know, you don't want to put up the storage sesh, uh, uh, building only to find out the recommendation was something else and you really liked plan B better. You know, proposing your options is, is difficult. And um, yeah. Okay. Uh, two, two things on the school, if I might. Um, yeah. I didn't mean to cut. No, no, no. Uh, one, we had uh, set a schedule uh, for um, a public input on what we call a gap closing. I would prepare a, a, a plan, present that. We'd have a public meeting. That always assumed uh, that that schedule, uh, uh, under that schedule, we would have a school budget by August 31. We, we don't. You're correct. Um, and I remain reluctant of putting the department heads in the community through a bunch of turmoil till we know what the number is. So um, I'm wondering, since we have the next district meeting scheduled September 25, which is your business meeting, and we need to know whether you want to try to move that to Tuesday or to Thursday, 
Um, my thought is I'd like to reset the dates um, for October, get you those new dates, um, same pattern. Right. Um, and then hope that we have a budget by September 30, if that's agreeable. So step one is I'd like to move those meetings to the right to October under that same assumption that we have a budget by September 30, if that's agreeable to you all. I don't see a problem with that. Anyone else? No. You, you also mentioned um, the, the, meet, the uh, joint town meeting is the 25th, which is our it, business it meeting. It is, which is your regularly scheduled right. business meeting. So um, the 20, is the I'm, room I, I mean, I wouldn't 26th? mind meeting no. the day before if, it's, if the room is open. Um, it, it isn't, but Laurie has said that she thinks the agenda is going to allow the planning board to simply move uh, to the other conference room okay. to hold their meeting that Tuesday evening. Okay. So um, is Tuesday evening then the wish of the board, the 24th? The, the 24th. Uh, okay, it's Tuesday, Thursday, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, uh, finally, um, we did, Teach. I'm sorry, I didn't mean teaching? Yeah. yeah, I start teaching in September. Um, Phillips and Select Monday. will be facing the same thing. That's their regular scheduled yeah. business meeting as well. Monday bother anyone? Uh, depending upon the press of business, we may be able to just skip it. Um, Who knows? What's it, no, I'm, now that I'm thinking about what's on that night. Mm -mm. No, yeah. Okay. Twenty The 23rd, Monday? Doesn't matter to me. Twenty third. Okay. It's a Monday. Uh, lastly, we did send the school um, a draft lease. Um, it will not be completed in time. Uh, they have uh, requested permission to uh, occupy the building. Um, I think. I don't know if they wrote the email from inside their offices in the building or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'm we, guessing they did. I, I think we could probably issue a very short one-page license um, to bridge the gap if that's agreeable with the board. Yes. Did we say that? <laughs> I, I mean, I we're, wasn't we're allowed to stand in the doorway. I, so yeah, I didn't. There. I didn't want you to do that. Thank you for not <laughs> doing that. I mean, we are a ALS. <laughs> We are an ALS um, community, but um, thank you for not doing that. Can I ask why they didn't get that done? Can they give an explanation as to why they were ignoring that? They didn't. It, Pretty I mean, important. We, we, well, if the, you the remember, that went back and forth. The meeting last night. Um, we went back and forth, but then they were in agreement. So nothing so the signed. Question, they, they questioned well, it last night. They don't know why they need a lease. So. Right. So they're going to so it's going to do it. Well, for openers, because they have no right to be an occupancy. Right. They have no right to insure the oh, building. Oh, your senior center. They have Sorry. no right to, um, and they could insure the contents as a, uh, under kind of a renter's insurance. Um, the other way to do it, which is what we've done so far, is we insured the building, uh, and we'll be sending them the, the insurance bill. They don't have an insurable interest in the building without the lease. Uh, the... Um, district agreement no. says that we will lease the right. buildings pay it. but nobody ever sat down to write the leases they just occupied the buildings I, yeah I, I think um, between Dr. Kazavant and I believe it was Mrs. Hughes I think they were questioning the necessity for one the, the legal precedent so if if that was what was on their mind, if that's what's preventing them from proceeding on it. They need to have a legal right to be in the building and to have an insurable interest. Mm -hmm. It's in the district agreement. And well, boom, there it is. Been in there. It has always been in the district agreement. There is nothing new in regards to that. The only thing that's new is we read it and send them an insurance bill and ask for a lease. Yeah, I, 
as far as like language that I, I you know stop or I'll say stop again I what do we pos what pressure can we possibly exert to say this is required uh, now that they have occupancy frankly not right. a whole bunch yeah yes I'm very disappointed well I mean, we'll proceed with the lease. You know, if we have to uh, give a temporary, we have, they have a temporary right now. I believe it expires September fourteenth. Does that sound about right? Well, that, that's the CO, and that's ours. Okay. And there's only one item remaining on that, so I don't uh, uh, have any it. concerns about All right. that. Um, shall I tell them that it's the board's thoughts that we should simply proceed to finish lease negotiations as quickly as possible? Absolutely. Okay. Could we make it stronger, just as quickly as possible? Can we put a deadline? You let them in the building. Yeah. I but didn't. It's, it's the, if it's I'm going on record to say I well, didn't let anybody in any right, building did. that didn't I, have an occupancy. In the building. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. They're in the building. Templeton has run things in a very laid back manner for a number of years. And continues um, to do so, apparently. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that's, we have a lot of ground that we've made up um, but there's a lot of ground yet to go, and many folks see some of these things as just, you know, big city bureaucratish. Um, I'm of the Robert Frost, good fences make for good neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, and good agreements make for better relations. But we'll, we'll pass that word along to okay. them. Uh, Mr. Terenzini, anything else, or do we need to go into executive session? I'm at afraid all? we must ask you for a brief executive session. We'll do our best to keep it simple. Okay. Uh, and it is not on the negotiations, it is on the sale of lands. Um, is that 21.6? Holly? Ready? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we would ask the executive, the board, to go into executive session uh, under 30A, section 21.6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. If the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating so. position of the public body. I'd say so. Move. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, at this time, we are in executive session. Those maps, please.